Hey there, I'm Iota, and I played this game. This being the Raft game. Um, coming in after the recent renovations update, getting prepared for the new quest, and I thought for some of the people that'll be getting into it for the, the first time, I'd show you how I go about stripping down an island and getting all the, the good loot out of it. So, first step is what you take with you. Gotta have a hook. I usually, if I have one at almost full health, I'll just leave it at one. Otherwise, I take a spare. Anything that's getting low needs a spare, except for the spear, rarely use it. I mostly rely on the bow to kill stuff, hoping for an advanced bow or uh, the promised spear gun in the, the next chapter three update. But for now, gotta roll with what we got. Uh, always make sure you got an extra shovel, they wear out really quick. And that's mainly the reason for that. Usually it takes me about three runs. You get to recognize the islands because there's only a few models. And this one with the, the two giant mountain peaks. Fill in jokes as necessary. Uh, this one takes probably three runs if you want to get everything. Um, I usually don't pick up, you know, clay and stone and all that. Kind of worthless stuff. So first tip, don't pick up the flowers unless you've decided that you're going to go on a flower run and pick up all of a certain kind of flower. They just take up too much of the, the space. My first thing is to kill the screecher. And this is a little tricky right up until you get the hang of it and then it becomes so easy to kill the 50 and get the achievement. So full strength, just a little before lead it, wait, and then sprint right out of the way. Uh, yeah, it, you can't, can't outrun it at normal speed and it, it can kill you pretty quick. I believe it's hit me underwater, so there's not really the, the same escape that you can do with the, the warthogs by just running back into the water. If you find out where it's coming in, line it up. And the key. Oh, wait till you can see the whites of its eyes. Haha! I love those bonus hits. Sometimes it glitches out and then it can come like from anywhere flipping and rolling and somersaulting and doing some really, really wild ones. Sometimes you can kind of predict where it's going to land, like if it's coming in on a certain loop, uh, you can predict which side it's going to land. And that can be helpful because then you can sneak up and get an extra hit while it's on the ground. Right, so if he turns this way, we catch him, and then he comes diving down here. It's not like it causes any extra damage. Then it just clips a little bit. And then you wait for the add. Almost got him. The last one, if you're, probably, if you're running forward to dodge the rock, when you kill it, it'll drop right in front of you and you'll run into it. So it's a good habit to just get in the habit of just running off to the side with it instead of just running straight forward into the, the beastie. So, since I picked up one blue flower, I've got to pick up all the blue flowers. So once I decide, basically once I decide I'm going to pick up something, I try to pick up all of it if I can, and then focus. So if I'm going to pick up fruit, then I'm going to do all the fruit. I can do some trick. Planks are the rarest resource in the game, which is why oh, for a long time I didn't bother cutting down the trees. It's like, oh, the axe is so expensive. But then it's like the new update, everything costs so much planks to, to build it in the the fancy wood stock. It really does help to stock up on it. These days I find I hit an island before I've really had a chance to comb the water very much. One of the nice things with chopping down trees is that it does give you a good visual record 
of the places that you've been. So you notice I haven't gone into the water yet. I have enough storage slots left on my inventory that I'm going to keep going. Maybe grab the white flowers because around the base of the island there's the blue in a clump, the white, and the red. And then you got to go up to the cave to get the yellow. So I may go up to the cave. Part of it will depend on what I get on the first treasure because that's going to be coming up soon. There's usually a warp hog at the top of the hill between the white, red, and yellow flowers. White flowers are worth grabbing because white and black paint are the most used. And it doesn't hurt to have just stuff. See, so when you get the big safe, it sometimes means you gotta do an extra run because if you get more items, it fills up quicker. What I often do now is I try to check and see if I've got something that I can craft to, to relieve an inventory spot. If you know you don't need something, you can chuck it. I mean, it gets to a point where I wonder what do you really need besides planks. But... So, one of the things I'm deciding is that if I'm going to get the, the Warthog, that's going to take up three slots, head, meat, and leather. And if I do that, then i got to make sure I go and kill the other Warthog who's usually at the top of the hill. So, one on the way, wait, dodge, shoot him in the butt, shoot him in the face. Ah, missed. And wait, because, ooh, lost my bone. Don't let him get set for it. Getting those, those cost, those cost an iron bar. Just one tip, especially if you're on the top of the hill, if you kill it when it's making its charge, the corpse will go flying, and then you got to climb all the way down the mountain to get it, or it'll despawn. One thing that I might do here is eat up. So I'm just going to eat them to replenish some some stuff, but then that'll open up another inventory slot so I can collect the red flowers and get that out of the way. Let's check if there's any treasure down here on the bottom. And then on my next run, Four treasures on these islands. I have had it where I've... now in these situations, like the easiest way to free up space is just to eat something. It's worth it's worth collecting the pictures. I think they're they're fun. Now I'm checking because yes, I've got the red flower. I don't have a space for red seeds. So I'm just going to turn back at this point with my full load. So now I want to make a choice. Do I have enough spots? I've only got spots for scrap. So I don't think I have enough space to, uh, to do a run through the water and collect some stuff going back to the boat. So I'm going to make sure that I go up and comb the island for any remaining bad guys 
because once I kill off the last warthog, then I know I don't have to save those three inventory spots for head, meat, and leather. And, I mean, I gotta have steak. I gotta build up my supply of raw meat, because I'm really hoping there's like a, a steak or something fun to, to do in the, in the next update. I find that the uh, seagulls go for the pineapples super quick. So this is where the warthog would usually be hanging out. Seriously? Only two of two enemies. Ooh! Second rate fancy llama. Come back for you. I don't usually. I used to carry the uh, what you call it, the uh, net launcher, all the time. Chicken. Could use a new chicken. I have a new new spot on the raft that I'm building. Could use a chicken. So I'm not getting anything on the treasure detector. I don't have another enemy to fight. So I'm just circling back around until I see a raft, and then I'll take the the jump. One thing that I really like about the new update is with all the extra lights. Ah. Uh, ah. Honestly, health regenerates so quickly, I'm not too worried about the occasional jump, but it's worth saving the time. Oh, and that's conveniently nighttime. Now, I don't mind actually looting underwater at night because it does. Lows, so it's pretty easy to locate and find. So you gotta just dump everything off. And what I like to have is multiple storages doing several different things. Saving my honeycomb. One quick dump site for, for flower seeds is really nice, and then sort them back every now and then. I've been trying to color code my, my drop-off spots so I can get through it a little, a little faster. It would be hard trying to remember where everything goes in the heat. I do like to try to keep the, the paintings somewhat organized. Keep my seeds out in my plantation. My head stop on. It was really nice when they started introducing all of the curtains and, and carpets and, and all that stuff to burn all those freaking palm leaves. My God, I threw away so much rope and palm leaves. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, okay, and I got flowers. So, one last drop off. Whoop. <laughs> Went a little too far with that one. I need to oh, I get a drop sheet. Finding planned drops are definitely the easiest way to, to navigate. Okay. So at this point, now that I've done one loop, I've got all the bad guys, taken it all off. Now I'm going to go get my get the net launcher. I almost want to clear out stuff on the bottom moving up. So I'm gonna do Net launcher. Fuck it, you can eat my uh, eat my potato. So this time I'm gonna try to clear out the rest of the flowers. Probably get some more lumber and wood and stuff. Then I'm gonna capture that special llama and bring him down. 
And I'll do another loop around the island underwater so I can take out any of the poison puffers and cherry pick whatever looks good. Sometimes they like to hide treasures in kind of inaccessible spaces. So it's always good to just strain a little bit. Ding for treasure. I don't really bother getting the mango trees. They don't drop enough lumber. God, who needs those palm pounds anymore? And I got enough mangoes to cause the mango diarrhea for a poor character for the next eon. So, since I'm over here, I'm going to pick up all the stuff in the cave. Um, dirt, I, I gotta hope that maybe there's going to be part of the update where we get fancier planters. And that way we can uh, maybe use some of this dirt to create like smaller, more efficient, space efficient um, planters. Because yeah, the crop plots are great. I mean, I've got a whole farm for right? My livestock have lots to what I need is some, some fancy planters for trees that are a little more efficient than the, the giant log constructions. You know, maybe something, you know, you could build it with titanium and... <laughs> you could build a planter out of dirt and titanium. How long does that take to gather? Pretty cool though. To do it like a corrugated metal style of planter. It looks sort of rustic, but also a higher tech, higher resource unit. I think, I think it's cool. So now it's just the cruise to, to find all the flowers that are poking around in little out of the way areas. I have enough, if it looks like I have enough room in storage, what I'll end up doing is taking a dive at the corners of the island, which are usually the places where the poison puffers come out, because if I can pick those guys up. Oh. Recipes are great, but honestly, you know, you, you, you get them so fast. And once you put up one or another cooking pot, I mean, what are you supposed to do with it? You know, if you saved if you saved them for a long time, you could probably do something pretty good. But it would take a long, long and boring time. So now that I'm here, I know that there's no no real way to get around the island uh, back to the the, play, the point to climb up. I've already taken care of the cave and the yellow and red flowers, which I feel like I missed a couple, but oh well, you know, can't can't win them all. So. At this point, I'm going to make sure that I've got uh, some of these poison puffers because, yep, there's a few right here at the end of the island. And again, once you start picking up something, it's just best to keep them uh, really easy to kill. Swim down, trigger them when they start to swim after you, back up slowly, stabbing them in the face with arrows or spears as you go. I don't like using the spear because I don't like getting killed by them. It just seems unpleasant. You know, I feel bad for my character. I'm like, no, dude, you, you can't, can't die of this pain. Because you end up having to back up anyway. What I usually like to do, checking to make sure I've got some scrap so I can top it up to 20 with the stack limit. But I'm going to snag some scrap and then get to the poison puffer, trigger him when I'm close to the end of my oxygen, then start backing up to the surface so that 
I can take a breath and just like literally just shave an extra second or two. And then you can, once you put the third arrow in, it doesn't matter. He's not going to blow up. You can just go in and take him, but it's also a moment to catch breath, which doesn't hurt. Check in a C. I could absolutely fit some of that seaweed, but there is a special treasure down here. So three poison puffers and a special treasure all here at the end. Woo! I mean, I'll laugh if it's full of, like, rope and palm leaves. <laughs> oh, well. Ooh. That means I can't fit any. Actually, I have. Oh, oh, craft. Okay, now we have space, and I'm just gonna grab like a 20 stack of of seaweed on my way back. Top of the top up the scrap, drop it off at the raft, and then head up. The boat. Now, only one more screw. Sand is worth saving up for a little while because the, with the new update, there's all sorts of cool stuff to be made out of glass, which is awesome. I don't have any ore, so I'm not going to, to take any of that. And 10 seaweed. That silver, silver seaweed is really valuable. Sweet, another poison puffer. And that's going to get me. It's probably a four. Not too far away. It helps to be drifting up with them because the arrows will naturally sink and it doesn't seem to matter what the velocity is as long as it hits the target. The arrow touches the puffer, it's, it's stuck, regardless of whether it was actually moving with velocity. So if you're going up, you know, gravity works in your favor. Don't ever try to make long shots because uh, almost guaranteed to fall short. So we got two more. Scrap 19. One more. <coughs> Don't really think there's anything else I can tighten up here. Plank. Okay, so I could get another. That was actually pretty convenient. I've missed a couple flowers there, so happy to catch those. There must be some sneaky red ones somewhere that I'm missing. Different level, maybe. Beauty is, if you catch enough stuff most of the time, it's really not that important to catch it all. Honestly, like, just hitting the highlights and, and moving on to the next island is often the best plan for successful and efficient raiding. Just checking the, the scope under here. A bit of scrap, but nothing really.
Oh, I mean, I like the seagulls because really farming seagulls more than anything else. Same, same issue. Gotta dump it all off as briskly as possible. Get that, get that. It is a pain sometimes trying to remember where everything goes because you, you, you can't just have everything. Did I get two? I got two paintings from that island. Wow. That's kind of unusual. Design. So, now we'll head on up to the top of the island, remembering that we came around the windward side so we'll want to try to come around the other side I don't know I mean you can't really call it north because I mean wind doesn't work that well the black flowers are at the top so I know I've got to get black flowers and pick up one of those ooh so that is the challenge. If I pick up that critter, then I can't carry anything else down. I have to make the jump and then climb back up. That's okay. You clear out the top, catch an animal. Trying to minimize the amount of back and forth, so I want to get the red berry and the black flowers that are over in this corner. Just painting is, especially with the designs, using a lot of white and black, which makes sense. So it's worth making sure that you're, you're at least stocking up a fair bit of those flowers. especially in terms of running through the story painting the uh, painting the raft is not really that important although it does it does make it feel a little cooler ha <laughs> huh. trying to run directly towards me what a fool okay so i haven't decided if i want to take this chicken dude yet Awesome. I'm really hoping that there's more to do with wool in the new update. We've got so many lambs, and they produce so much wool. I am not going to bother with the fruit. you got to always make a judgment call what is worth keeping and what's not. Because it's not, not always worth it to collect everything in the beginning. You know what, it helps to just stockpile everything, but as you get on, you're like, well, I've got like four cases worth of that if it goes down. The one exception is planks. Never stop collecting planks. Because everything burns planks. Hopefully, more things will work off of biofuel. 
I think a biofuel power, biofuel powered smelter would be the absolute most awesome. Thing. So I'm hoping that that comes in. I've got my graft preset to do it, so I'll be just a little disappointed if it doesn't come to be. Throw that off the side. Whee! Huh. Kind of expected to hear it going down. Aha! Anxiety and you say. So, down this way. If you don't want to hurt yourself, you can just go straight down the mountain, but then kind of drag the arrow back on the on the side of it, and then it just it just slows you down, and you just get, you can almost imagine yourself just sliding down the side of the mountain. So tough going up, but easy to come down. Let's see if the shark goes for a nom. Always manages to startle. So once I come back to the, the raft and it's nighttime, so it's time for some maintenance. Gotta deal with these batteries. I saw someone suggesting a advanced battery that would be holding a larger charge. I think that would be pretty cool. As I'm doing this, I'm also trying to look at my collection here to see what I can drop off really quick in my secondary storage locker. Probably can't fit any of the rest of that. I'll drop off my seeds. And One of the reasons why I have this large open area for my farm animals is so that they have a very large area that they can be eating their grass from, so that it just takes a little bit of pressure off having to keep up with changing the, the batteries and making sure that there's water. But these are always the good times to do some of those maintenance activities. As things get more full, that's also a, a good sign that it's time to do just a little bit of production. You know, as you end up with too much of something, like if I, say, had too much glass, that'd be a sign to just make a big load of lanterns. I've been making just tons and tons of lights and ropes and everything that I can use to burn through. All of this extra stuff. Uh, and you know what I am going to do? I've been using a lot of black paint. So, since it's winter, winter seasons would actually be kind of neat. Well, 
one of the reasons why I like having so many paint mills is because it's too it takes too long to, to sit and wait for it. But then it's it's too short to be going off and doing something else and coming back all the time. So it's it's not always the most convenient. Now while I am So what I'll probably do is do a another light loop around. Hmm. Let's see what that is. I'm also trying to get that expert gatherer achievement. So I'm trying to find some excuses to use the hook to gather stuff. It's one of the downsides of trying to do it at night. Unless it's in the shallows, it can be very hard to keep track of it. But honestly, there just isn't enough. I've just never been able to justify waiting till till morning for stuff. So I mean, I could get that chicken. But I want to make sure there isn't there, there's another poison puffer. I want all of that explosive goo that I can get, since I figure that's going to be the basis of any advanced weaponry or spear guns. It's worth noting that the new critters, like the, the whales and dolphins and all that, they only seem to come up around the raft. So you won't find them if you're out here. Clay is only worth collecting to the point that you've got some spare and as much as you need to make all the clay bowls to, to fill a storage container. Once you've got a storage container full of bowls, it's basically got no further use. Oh, I know what I'm looking for at this point. I'm going to make sure I get all that silver algae that I had to miss the first time. Hey, little fish. Was there one over there? There's one over here. Silver algae is for making the shark dinner, which is pretty good. The harder foodstuffs to find in the game are the uh, mushrooms and the silver algae. Don't worry too much about a little bit of, of health loss from diving. It, it recuperates pretty quick. And once you're out of sight of the raft, you get up on land, the shark isn't going to chase you anyway. So you've got some time to relax. Okay. It's good to kind of keep your head up, look around, kind of make a bit of a dive plan. And then once you're doing it, you can basically hold down the movement key, and as long as you're targeting the mouse onto what you're trying to pick up, it goes pretty efficiently. Oh, 
copper's rarer than iron, so it's definitely worth picking up, and circuit boards, batteries, use up a bunch of it. So, I have boxes and boxes of batteries that I use, because it's not something you ever want to run out on, and it helps use up all that extra plastic. Oh, there's... There's rarely stuff deep down, but it's worth checking out, because... There's always an exception. I often find it's better for underwater resources to do more small islands and to focus on the big islands with, with what makes them unique. The po poison puffers for explosive food, the silver algae, cave mushrooms, dirt, animals, and then if you're getting like sand, clay, stone, just get those from the small islands. It's not worth the time burdening yourself and then having to go back and forth to the raft over the island, because at the end of the day, your time is actually the most valuable resource in the game. So if you want to make more efficient gathering. Uh, don't don't try to do it all at the island. I mean, you could get load after load. I've on one island there was I picked up something like 80, 80 or 90 seaweed. So why? Like unless that is the main goal, which in that case okay, it legitimately was because I was making more value than has a right to exist. Don't, uh, don't get too caught up with the lower grade resources. Focus on what really matters. Priority is always being treasure, ores, scrap. Uh, and then you're getting to your like, seaweed, sand. Clay is very, very I think a single small island has like 60 stones, so why why waste your time on a big island? Although, after after the early game, stone has almost no value. I burned a whole bunch of it making uh, the canisters for the death launch. And that is about the only use I could think of for it. Ascending and descending are observation times. You also notice I don't have the flippers or the oxygen tank. You know, in the beginning it was mostly because, oh, I, I don't want to waste the resource. I want to save the resources, use it for other, other crafting purposes. I don't want to have to keep replacing the flippers and the oxygen bottle for a little bit of benefit. And now I'm kind of at the point where while it's nice to, to eat off some of the time as you're swimming to or from a destination, it doesn't seem to actually make that much of a difference because it's the speed of the hook in, in digging stuff out that is really the, the limiter on how fast you can pick up stuff, not the ability to swim from bit to bit. You know, that would be actually pretty cool if you could have, instead of the hook, like a, a drill or something. So it wouldn't be about throwing it to catch stuff, it'd be like drilling it out of the rock or something. But it'd be an excuse to kind of electrify. Oh. Did miss you. See, trigger, first shot, second shot, and then, you see if you're coming up, shoot straight down, really easy, dive down, grab the silver algae, patience, 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 go.
never never sting out on the scrap. That's that's one of the few things that's worth really being diligent about collecting. You know, or it requires refining. You got to have the the planks to do it. And, you know, you can have a, a big box full of ore just waiting for when it's needed. But scrap nails it just it seems to be in everything and it's definitely worth doing because i want that expert gatherer thing i'm just gonna do something kind of useless here and all this stuff that i can just gather by swimming or just leave i'm going to On, throw, throw, throw. Uh, no. I figure if eventually I'll get to five thousand if I pick up a, a few every every now and then. Not that this is the greatly rewarding part. But I think it'd be kind of cool to have a hundred percent achievements. Although that would require finding the freaking plane island, and that's been the the biggest the biggest challenge playing raft is managing to get to the plane island. I mean, I've got like six or seven tiki um, tiki poles, and I can't get the freaking. Last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go up and get that chicken. I got a new spot for a few chickens, so. Well, I have obtained all of the special animals multiple times over now. I think I have more than one of all of them. But a regular blue chicken for my, my little picnic area will be okay. I'm doing some nature walks use a little bit of chicken to populate it. Now sometimes after you use the net launcher your it's like the canister will be stuck to your hand, a bit of a glitch. Uh, just like close it out and come back in it, it seems to sort itself out. Shot? That's remarkable. Never overshoots. Yep, go down the path. It, it, it'll bounce. So off what I try to do is try to hit it just before. I, I figured it was going to have more drop than that, but maybe I had too much elevation. See? Look at that. Ha! Huh. Okay, so it took three. Not my best record, but... In my defense, the, the cluckers are the hardest part of it. Because they're the tiniest. It is funny, though, when, you, when you're carrying, like, a llama or something, you can't see off anything. See? So, like, right now, all I gotta do is just hug the cliff a little bit, slide down, and I'm almost back. I feel bad for them. They look so tired. Look at the bags under their eyes. <laughs> oh no. Uh oh. It's going to be a tough swim. The shark will get me. Oh no. <laughs> Come on. Water. Water. 
And this is going to be my new picnic area. So, chicken, you are the first. But that's basically, as we come to the end of it, having played this game, that's how I'd go about taking out this kind of island. Start off with your enemies. Find the screecher, find the, the warthogs. Make sure that you get those down. If you're close to the shore, uh, fire, shoot at the warthog. When he charges at you, just back up into the water, shoot him from swimming. They can't get into the water, and it's just it was a really easy and safe way to take them out. Then, make sure that you're picking up your treasures, get your flowers, and every time you gotta go back to the raft, make sure that you jump into the water and pick up anything on the way that you need to. This is probably the hardest island because it's got the two giant mountains and there's a really long climb. But when I find the next big island, I'll uh, try to show you the contrast when it's a little easier to move around and it's not such a, a time commitment to do the big winding trail up to the top. So I'm Iota, and this was Raft. I played this game, and maybe you should too.